Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Rating the Races. So today we're going to do a quick recap of some of the racing from yesterday and also one race from Friday um, and also look ahead to some of the future targets for some of the horses that I thought ran yesterday um, and also on uh, Friday. So the first one I want to talk about is a horse called Captain Morgs. It was fantastic to see Captain Morgs win at Ascot. To be fair, it didn't look likely. Um, Gary Clermont ran a, a really good race and went 1.2 in the run. Captain Morgs just jumped the last and that last uh, jump at um, final hurdle was crucial because he had the momentum and, and ended up getting past uh, Gary Clermont. As it's a 1-2 for the ratings, I think the form will work out well. But the reason Captain Morgs was in our um, tracker anyway was because of when he finished uh, third to Guard Your Dreams at Cheltenham. This is a case of when your horse wins the race, so we were on Guard Your Dreams that day, uh, look at those behind and see if you can spot something that is eye-catching in itself. And there was two that day, Captain Morgs and Art Approval were both five-year-olds. They both come out and won since. So that was a perfect result for us on Friday. Moving on to Saturday, um, I want to talk about Guard Your Dreams. He went to the uh, Coral Hurdle, um, the Grade 2. He was giving away, well, he wasn't giving away weight, but he was officially wrong in the handicap based on their ratings. It wasn't a handicap, but he should have been carrying a lot less than his rivals. Why they ran here, I have no idea. There was a handicap they could have won at the um at Ascot or at Haydock, I think it was at Haydock, earlier on uh, in the day that was worth 26, I think, to the winner. Um, they would have won that, especially as they finished third here. They would have won that. They would have gone up in the handicap, and then they could have looked at graded races. Instead, they jumped straight away to a graded race, um, rushed it. He's finished third. He's going to go up in the handicap, so the handicaps might, you, you know, they're not going to be as easy. And now he's got to face graded company next time where he might I think he picked up seven grand for this or seven and a half for finishing third if that's all his level he, he's you know say he is just a third place in a grade two horse he's got to have three runs in grade twos to win the 26 grand that he would have won because I'm convinced he would have won the handicap if he gets that close and finishes third in a graded race why would he have not won the handicap I don't understand why uh, trainers are keen to rush horses if they're seven, eight, nine, then you can understand that. This also is a five-year-old, so I think that was a very foolish decision, um, personally. Moving on to the uh, three fifteen, and now this is the horse that finished sixth that I think can go on to uh, win in a future race. Monsieur Laco. Now I thought this race was actually quite a good race. There was a lot of horses in good form. Um, before midnight, Amula Gold and Sky Pirate had, had finished first, first and second in their recent runs. Um, Diego de Charmiel and Dolos both looked like they were coming down the handicap. And Sully Dock had Ascot form. So although Monsieur Leco finished sixth of seven here, I don't think it was a bad run. But I expect the handicapper to drop him. I expected him to drop him maybe two. And that will put him just a pound higher than when he was second to... Amula Gold when he was run down late on last time out at Ascot. Now, I think there's a really obvious race for Monsieur Laco, and it's this one. This Sandown race, um, over two mile in early January. I think it's on the 8th of January this year. Why do I like this race for Monsieur Laco? Well, first of all, it's a two mile handicap chase, which I think will suit him. Well, obviously, it does suit him. But he's been to Sandown three times in his career. Um, he's finished first, he finished second in an Imperial Cup behind Malaya, and then he finished third, albeit beaten a long, long way, but he was beaten by Guard Your Dreams, who's up like 20 odd pounds since then, and Fre Friend or Foe, who got the run of the race. It got broken apart by, I think it was Totterdown, went miles clear. Um, what I think Friend or Foe chased, Guard Your Dreams chased, and everything else thought we wait out the back. Um, Monsieur Leco being one of those and he got himself you know way out of contention and quietly ran on into third back at Sandown over fences I still think he's well handicapped Monsieur Leco this looks ideal for him um, so just keep an eye on him there's also another race back at Sandown in February so if he wins this one in January he could well return in February as well uh, Brave Man's Game he did everything right I thought he jumped really well um, he really reminds me, now this is a big name to use as a, as a comparison, 
he really reminds me of Denman. He really does. He's that big chasing type. Um, probably doesn't have the speed of, you know, like Kato Star did or, or one of those Nichols types. But I think he's just a big brute. Um, and I hope he continues his progression. I think he'll end up at, uh, probably at uh, Kempton in the Kato Star Novices first before turning up in the Festival Novices Chase, I think it's called. I was going to call it the RSA Chase. Um, the Festival Novices Chase, where I think that trip will be more to his liking, um, the three mile at Cheltenham, rather than the two mile five he ran in last year in the Ballymore. Next horse I want to talk about is Don's Levant and If the Cat Fits. Now, Don's Levant, uh, If the Cat Fits was the horse that I highlighted for this race um, on the uh, from the entries. I thought he was disappointing, but I thought he was given a terrible ride. I don't know what they were doing. They went forward on him. If the Cat Fits never goes forward, why did they go forward? They'd stepped up from two and a half to three anyway. I don't understand the, the need to go forward, whether it was just trying something. Um, don't give up on if the cat fits. And that leads me nicely into Don's Levant. I highlighted Don's Levant after he finished fourth at Ascot in February. Now he's had four runs since then, and I've actually backed him every single time. He finished eighth at 28 to 1, 32 is on bet fair. Disappointing. He then finished second at Aintree over two and a half, which was encouraging. He then dropped to two mile for the, um, was that the Welsh champion hurdle. Uh, when he finished second, um, and then he came out and won. Now, so many people give up after, you know, oh, I, I put a horse in my tracker and he finished eighth. Do you believe in yourself? Do you believe in your ability to spot a horse that is well handicapped and just needs things to go right? If you do, then don't give up after them after one run. And I don't. I often back horses two, three, maybe even four runs, sometimes a few more, um, for the season. Yeah, so I back a horse two, three, four, five runs sometimes um, if I believe they are well handicapped and they just need conditions. And I do believe that Don's Levant just needed conditions. He ran second twice. So for him to go off such a big price, it was all about the trip. Did he? Will he get the trip? He did get the trip. Um, admittedly, I think they went slow from the front, so it worked out really nicely for him. Um, so one of the things I have put a video on YouTube as well for this do not give up on your selections if you believe that you have the knowledge and the ability to spot horses that are well handicapped or that just need conditions to go right. The next horse I want to talk about, Aplutar. It was very impressive, don't get me wrong. The race fell apart and it was like Royal Pagai and Chatham Street Lad. They're top, top class handicappers for me. They are not Gold Cup horses. Um, Imperial Laura fell, Clondor Castle ran on into fourth, he's a, a good handicapper, waiting patiently pulled up and Bristol Demai wanted softer going. So, although Apple Tar won, I tweeted earlier on in the week, that is a really weak group, uh, group one, grade one if you take out Apple Tar. And Apple Tar ran in it and he won very comfortably. So I, I thought it was impressive. Um, I'm hoping that well, I'm not hoping for anything there. It was just impressive. But don't just take it completely literally. Literally, um, He beat, essentially, he beat nothing for me. Moving on to Gowron Park, where Bob Ollinger made his uh, chase debut. Yeah, it was good. It wasn't amazing. It didn't, you know, he made a couple of mistakes. Um, it was a good run. He won. Um, I think he's been shortened to six to four for the Martian office, which we don't mind. We advised him here at sixes straight after he won the Ballymore. Um, I think he'll turn up odds on favourite, and I do think he'll he'll take all of the beating. Um, just another run, get some more experience into him. That would be perfect for him. So, this is the one that I'm sure you've all been waiting for. This is the county hurdle horse. In that field there, there is a county hurdle horse. And it's a horse I have never, ever been a fan of. Goshen, County Hurdle. I think he's rated 157 at the moment. He's going to drop after finishing fourth here. I think they might drop him four or five pounds for that. He's disappointing. 
he's not grade one, grade two class at this stage in his career. It's always tricky for four-year-old, five-year-olds um, to win graded races, but they can certainly win handicaps. Now, this could be a very similar plan to what they, uh, to what Dan Skelton did with Chitabello. Chitabello was running in these types of races, wasn't quite winning them, finishing third, fourth, fifth sort of thing. Eventually, they got his mark down by running in these types of races, turned up for the county hurdle, and he won it really impressively. So how can Goshen do that? Well, I've written down that they could run in the Unibet hurdle at Cheltenham in December. Um, that's over two miles, but I think they'll probably come up against one or two that are going to be too quick for him and too good for him. They can then go to the Christmas hurdle at Kempton. And again, I'm hoping for a similar result, fourth or fifth, drop a couple of pounds. If he could drop to a mark of 150 for Cheltenham, I'd be really keen on him in the in the county hurdle. So he needs to drop seven pounds, but you can do that by running in these types of races, by not getting too close, finishing fourth or fifth. If during one of those races, you know, you're going really well and you try and win it and you do win it, great. I think uh, Unibet's a grade two, Christmas hurdles are grade one. There's no downside to running in those and trying to win them. But if it's not happening, you're not going to win. Just let him come at home in his own time and see how far he can drop in the handicap. So that's my speculative, let's hope Gary Moore likes handicaps, uh, county hurdle plan for a horse.